Hello YouTube, I'm Arn Peter. Good morning to you all. And today I'd like to give you a quick tip on how to use scripts effectively in your games. So, what I have open here is one of my old games. I made this in high school, I guess it was like five or six years ago now. Uh, as you can see, I didn't understand the power of scripts back then, so I'm going to show you one way they can be used. I'm going to jump into this step event. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of code here. Um, to somebody just coming in here, it would take them a while to, to read through here and understand everything that's happening. Particularly since I have this apparently had this weird habit back then of trying to compress as much information in one line as possible. So you can see right here, I have this if statement. I have all these three variables being set in here, and this one right here is just terrible. Look how much stuff I'm trying to do in one line right there. So it's 60 lines, but if I were to write the same code today with my current spacing, it'll probably be like almost double that, because this is weird. Anyway, so I know there's comments here to kind of indicate what everything is, but comments can become outdated. Like, as you, as you add something, like if I decide to add something here, um, I may or may not add a comment to it, and then you're going to think that it's part of the death section. Or if I des decide that some of the death sections move somewhere else, for whatever reason, this comment is an outdated, so comments are not resistant to change. Um, however, scripts are. So what we can do is, let's see, this is all basically standard movement. Let's see, we have left, right, up, down, and what's this here? Oh, and, and here's an example. Here I have a collision, which had, doesn't really have much to do with movement, but still under the movement section. So that really shouldn't be part of that. This is really the only part of, st part of standard movement. So, um, all right, so in order to make use of a script, I'm going to create a script, and I'm going to call it player, who? player standard movement. And then I can just take all that, pop it over here, and then over here I just call player standard movement. Basically sort of the same purpose as a comment, except now it's much more clear, much more concise. Um, so I'm going to go through and go ahead and try and do as much as possible in the script, and we'll see how much easier it is to understand at the end. And there we go. This is what the code looks like now. So as you can see, it's much um, easier to see what all is happening. For example, like, uh, well, there's much more, there's much less information to parse through now. So if you have, you're having an issue with the way the player's rotating or something like that, you know it's not, that's not a standard movement thing. You know that's not an update status thing. You look down, it's, it's the update angle. So you know it's look in here, or in here, for those issues. Um, so having your code organized like this makes it much more easier to debug. And um, in case I didn't make it clear earlier, I probably should have gone this through this first. The way scripts work is so like for instance here I call update camo. When I when I call this it'll jump over into update camo. It'll do all this and then it'll jump back over here. So it basically as as we're using them now, basically as if we just are copying this over to here. We're just doing this in here. So that's how that works. So that's how scripts work in this scenario. Um, just kind of to give you an idea of how this works in a project I'm working on now, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what that's that same section of code looks like in my current project. Um, and uh, we'll see how it looks. Of course, I didn't. I didn't censor it ahead of time just to make sure that it looks right, so it's probably not going to look as clean because, you know, it's. I didn't actively try to make it look good for the video, but we'll see how bad it is. So, keep in mind, um, in the angle shooter, that just now, that was like 60, 60 lines of code I was, I was compressing using scripts. And in here, let's see, where is he? The, this guy. This is my um, sub-event for that guy. So, there is some stuff in here that I probably could um, break into more scripts, but as you can see, it, it, it's not it's not terribly bad to, to try and understand all this. You can more or less understand what's happening. And there's a lot more than 60 lines of code happening here. I think, in the, if I look at the movement, I think that that breaks down into more scripts on its own. Let me see. You can see I use scripts now a lot. It's really useful. Um, this guy. So yeah, even it's broken down to more scripts. So 
So yeah, by using a lot of scripts makes your code much more easier to process. And this would probably be several hundred lines if I didn't break down scripts. All right. So that's one way you can use scripts to organize your code, make it easier to process, make it easier for you to find um, where different code is. Um, another way you can use scripts is to avoid redundant code. All right. So here I have the QT, um, Quick Tips Loop Lines project, at least a variation thereof. So all, all I have right here is four bullets, and each of them gets created if I press up to or key. So um, because this is all kind of the same format, I, I, can, I can make a script for it. And we can, I can kind of try to just do it all in these scripts. So I'm going to call it handle gun. Or handle gun. And whenever you want to do this, um, in this case, it's not as simple as just copying and pasting it and just doing it and then just calling the script over and over again because there's some information that's, that's specific to this gun. So in this case, we have the button that we're pressing is specific to this particular gun. And the object we're using is specific, is specific to this particular gun. So the way we want to end up calling this is we want to say handle gun. And we want to pass in all the specific information. So in this case, we're going to pass in the key as well as the bullet. And then in here, in order to kind of take in that info, the key to press, we're going to create a variable for that, we're going to set equal to argument zero. So argument zero being the first thing that they pass in, so I'm just going to store that in this variable key to press. The second thing they pass in the argument one, so bar, um, uh, what would it be? Um, object. Object in the argument one. So then, now that we have these sorted variables, we can go and replace them in here. And then we're done. So now we can just do this over and over again. And we can just adjust it for the various keys as well as the various bullet types. And that's all there is to it. So this is a lot easier to, to um, look through. And in addition, if you ever want to make changes to, to the way the, the gun shooting works, you can just change it over here in the script. There's another really cool thing about scripts, which I learned quite recently. Um, you can actually do a variable amount of arguments. So it doesn't always have to be two arguments. You can have it sometimes we take three, sometimes it's take four, or, or, what, or whatnot. Um, this is very handy because, well, when I'm working in Java or C++ or something like that, I often um, have a script that's named the same thing but takes a different amount of, um, of arguments, so that way I can have it respond to different sets of information in different ways type deal. So that way I have more flexibility in what I give it. So in this case, let's say we wanted to create a um, type of gun which shoots two types of bullets. Maybe this, this gun shoots a red bullet and it shoots a green bullet. So we want our script to be able to handle this situation where there's three arguments as well as this situation where there's two arguments. So the way you do this, uh, first off, I don't believe it works with this type of argument zero, argument one style. We have to reference it a little bit differently. You can reference it like this. So this way, instead of referencing it as um, just the standalone variables, where it's, the arguments are referenced as indexes in, in an array. So here we have um, argument 0 and 1 taken the same way, and then if there's a third argument, we want that to be called as, I don't know, obj2 equals argument um, 2. But this won't always be there, so before doing this, we need to run a check, and we need to check if argument count equals, equals 2. Three. If there are three arguments, then take in this next one. I'm probably going to need a default, otherwise. One. There we go. I'll just do this real quick. If object two, one. There we go. So what I'm doing here is we're, I'm going to set it to negative one by default. If it's at negative one, it'll find it. It'll check that here, and then it won't create. Try to create another object. However, 
if it gets set in here and it gets set to a different object, uh, only if our, only if we have three arguments in, inputted. In that case, we would create it. So this is really handy because if we didn't have this variable argument option, we have to make two separate scripts which look very similar. But this way, we can generalize this script to handle both situations. So it's really neat. All right. So I hope you learned some stuff about scripts and how they can be useful. Um, and uh, I hope you start using them in your projects and make your code better. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. So talk to you later.